Okay, our fifth speaker today is, uh, leads a team from DD Research America, and also DD Beijing. Um, the, uh, it's Tony Quinn, and he'll, he will speak on ride-hailing order dispatching on DD via, re, via reinforcement learning. Hi, good morning. Uh, I'm Tony Chin uh, from DD Labs. Uh, it's a great honor to be selected by the Wagner Prize Committee for the final and to present our work on reinforcement learning for right hailing order dispatching at DD via um, a reinforcement learning framework. Uh, this is a joint work with a number of people. Uh, Xiao Chen and Yan are also with DD Labs in Mountain View in California. Uh, Fan Zhe, Hong Tu, and Jiaping are all based in the Beijing headquarter. And there are many others from the uh, AI labs and marketplace teams uh, who have contributed to the works here in one way or another. Online ride hailing or mobility on demand um, has emerged only several years ago, um, but has already gained incredible popularity um, and prevalence around the world. Um, this is all because the needs of travelers are shifting with the current trends emphasizing the need for alternative forms of transportation and demand for more personal choice in mobility. According to uh, the MOD fact sheet by the Department of Transportation, um, as we can see here uh, in the two largest markets in the world, uh, urban population is approaching 82% in the US and 58% in China in 2019. People are increasingly relying on crowdsourced mobility supply through ride-hailing platforms to meet their travel demand, in addition to traditional forms of uh, transportation. Now, according to data from Statistica, uh, the top five ride-hailing markets around the world account for a total volume of about 130 billion US dollars in 2019 with China, the US, and India being the distant leaders. Um, and we have seen emergence of a group of online uh, leading players uh, in this domain, with Didi headquartered in China, Uber and Lyft uh, in, in the US, Ola from India, uh, both in the UK, and uh, in Brazil, we've also got 99, which is actually not part of Didi. Um, some of you might not be familiar with uh, DD, the company, so um, I'm going to give you a quick overview of DD's uh, business and operations through uh, a quick set of statistics. Um, the lineup of our products uh, include Express and Premier Ride Share Services, uh, Enterprise Solutions, uh, the traditional form of taxi, uh, designated driving, uh, bike share, and many others. Um, our platform supports over 550 million passengers fulfilling over 10 billion rides each year. Now, to put the data scale of data into context, each day there are tens of billions of uh, uh, location points and routing requests queried, um, and hundreds to thousands of terabytes of data generated and processed. Um, the rideshare partnership that we have cover 80% um, of the world's population that reach more than 1,000 cities. Um, trip requests and vacant vehicles um, are matched and uh, transactions are completed within the ride hailing marketplace. Uh, this is a two-sided marketplace um, where both the drivers and passengers are important uh, players within the marketplace. Um, to the drivers, the income and their idle time or their utilization is something obvious, obviously something that they pay much attention to. And to the passengers, um, their ridership experience is mostly reflected um, in the pickup distance, uh, the order response rate, as well as the fulfillment rate. So um, as a platform, uh, the ride-hailing the system um, cares about all these metrics 
and try to optimize them through a set of levers, mainly the order dispatching, a driver repositioning, as well as pricing. Uh, we'll focus on order dispatching, which is sometimes also referred to as order matching. Uh, the process starts from the potential passenger keying the origin and destination into the app. Um, the, pa the platform then offers a quote for each applicable product. Uh, so here in this case, I, I select the express product um, and submit my order. Um, then this is where um, the matching process begins. The system then searches for a vacant driver uh, nearby to match my order. Um, now upon the successful search, um, then my order is assigned to, uh, assigned to the driver and I'm told about how far the driver is from my current location. Um, if the search takes too long because of, likely because of a low supply, then I may drop my request. Uh, likewise, um, if I see that it's gonna take too long for the driver to come and pick me up, then I'm also um, gonna cancel my order. So, so this all seems to be uh, quite straightforward, but uh, why is order dispatching important from the system's perspective? Now let's look at two motivating examples. Um, on the, on the left-hand side, we've got one passenger and two vacant vehicles, uh, one in cold area and the other one in hot area. Um, so assigning the vehicle in cold area to the trip actually helped to reduce the uh, overall uh, idle time uh, or in the, for the interest of a total uh, driver income because um, the vehicle in the hot area it is more likely to be uh, assigned to another trip uh, in the very near future anyway. Now on the right hand side, uh, the system has a choice to assigning um, the vehicle to either passenger. Um, and here, um, apparently assigning the driver to the trip that goes that goes to the hot area presents a better choice from uh, the long-term uh, perspective of uh, increasing the total driver income. So we, we see that from this example that um, it's important to consider the long run effect of our decision because our immediate actions will affect the future outcome. Uh, the optimization problem that we are interested in solving is a dynamic problem uh, in that uh, the trip requests stream in throughout the day and the driver's availability is stochastic. Uh, they can get online and offline at will. Um, and we would like to um, solve for uh, an online dispatching or matching policy that matches drivers to uh, passenger requests on the fly. Uh, with the objective of uh, in improving uh, the uh, overall marketplace efficiency, that is uh, higher total driver's income, um, higher uh, order fulfillment and response rates, and shorter pickup distance. Our solution framework uh, is based on reinforcement learning and specifically uh, the generalized policy iteration. Um, here we start with a given uh, matching policy and we collect all the transaction data under this policy. Uh, we then learn the value function uh, from the data using a policy evaluation method powered by a deep, val a deep value network uh, that's tailored for a spatial temporal applications. Now based on the value function, then we generate the new uh, order matching policy uh, by supply demand batching and uh, solving a linear assignment problem with the assignment edges uh, defined by the output of the value function. Um, and since we uh, support an, a large number of cities, uh, then uh, transfer learning is also important. So the, uh, um, the deep value network also facilitates the transfer learning to transfer knowledge from um, from the information learned from one city uh, to other cities, um, so as to make the training uh, of the models for all of the cities better and faster. Now, let's put the problem into uh, mathematical terms. Um, our goal is to solve for a system policy, pi, um, 
which assigns an order to one of the drivers, uh, one of the free drivers uh, at the assignment time. Uh, and the set of free drivers X of T uh, depends on the matched trips before T um, and the policy pi itself. Um, we set the price P of pi to be zero if the order uh, is canceled before fulfilled. Um, and, um, and the objective that, uh, that we consider in this talk, the primary objective we consider in this talk uh, is the uh, total driver income, that is uh, the sum of uh, all, the sum of P, P of pi uh, over all the summit orders. Um, and we can define uh, the other uh, matrices of interest uh, accordingly. For example, uh, the uh, average pickup distance uh, the response rate and fulfillment rate. Um, a common approach to optimize order dispatching under uh, the uh, dynamic nature of demand supply uh, is to batch trick requests uh, and drivers within predefined time windows um, and solve the matching problem at the end of the batch window. Um, matching is then formulated as a linear uh, linear assignment problem, uh, which can be solved by the uh, KM algorithm, aka uh, the uh, Hungarian method. Um, the W's here are uh, the uh, uh, edge weights for the uh, for the assignment problem, and the Z's are the pairing uh, decision variables. Uh, the edge weights could be as simple as the uh, the within batch uh, on route on route time or uh, the pickup distance um, to minimize the overall uh, pick up time uh, within within the batch for the for the orders within the batch, um, and we treat this mathematical program as a policy generator uh, with the inputs of uh, the uh, the W's the edge weights, and um, the output is a uh, is the uh, decision variable Z, which can be translated uh, into the system policy pi. Um, and um, so the combinatorial optimization approach is actually now um, an industry standard method, um, and that is also something that we start with. Um, the linear assignment uh, based on within batch pickup distance um, is myopic, however, in this case. Um, and we have seen from the motivating examples that uh, it's very important to look at the long run. Um, so to do that, we model the trajectory of the driver uh, by a semi-Markov decision process. Um, specifically, the state of the driver uh, is a cell in the discretized test spatial temporal grid. So here's an illustration of a spatial grid map uh, with hexagon cells. Um, the, the option of a semi-MDP uh, is uh, similar to an action in an MDP, MDP framework. And, and it's uh, to either serve a particular order uh, or to idle cruise. <clears throat> and the difference from the action in the MDP is that option uh, lasts over multiple time units. Uh, the immediate reward here is simply uh, the, uh, the trip price, uh, the, the income from the, from the trip price, uh, which is just a constant fraction uh, of the total trip price for the, for the driver. Uh, and the uh, state transition of the driver uh, is governed by the transition probabilities. Uh, and in this case, actually, the transitions are uh, deterministic. Um, and our semi-MDP is episodic. Um, so um, the state of the driver reaches a terminal state uh, when the time component is at the end of the day. Uh, since the reward collected from the option is over multiple time units, uh, we basically divide it into pieces and uh, discount each piece properly while uh, considering the, uh, the unroll time uh, for the driver to pick up the passenger. Um, the driver's policy is a function um, that maps the state to an open order. Um, since it's from the single agent perspective, uh, it's actually dual to the uh, system policy in that whenever the system um, assigns the order to, assign the order I to driver X, the implied policy for the, for the driver X is to serve order I. Um, the value function always associates with a particular driver policy, pi d, 
um, and is the expected long run uh, cumulative income uh, with proper discounts uh, given the current state of the driver. Uh, to learn sorry. to learn the value function uh, from the set of uh, uh, historical data, uh, we started out uh, with a traditional policy uh, evaluation method, uh, the uh, tabular TD learning method, temporal difference learning method here. Uh, the value function is uh, represented by um, a table corresponding to the spatial temporal grid. Um, and um, it's, iterated, it's iteratively updated in the DP manner um, by the difference between uh, this one step bootstrapped estimation of the origin's value and the actual value of the origin. Um, depending on whether uh, the driver is in service or not uh, during the transition, then we plug in uh, the proper immediate reward into the updates. And, um, and once we uh, learn the value function from, uh, from this set of updates, uh, we then compute the edge weights of the assignment, linear assignment problem um, through the temporal difference error on each eligible driver passenger pair. So that is the sum of the immediate, pri immediate reward um, and the uh, uh, one step bootstrap est estimation um, and taking that, the difference of that and the, uh, the uh, the actual value of the, uh, of the destination. Um, the policy learned in this way uh, is a collective greedy policy um, that tries to optimize uh, the income for all the drivers within, within the batch. And the, uh, uh, the objective here is obviously a sum of the cumulative reward for uh, each individual drivers within the batch. Um, the tabular policy evaluation method is uh, simple to implement and uh, works, um, in some cases, works quite well against distance-based ass assignment. However, there are three major limitations um, that call for more sophisticated uh, representation of the value function and the training method to learn it. Um, the tabular uh, state representation uh, is unable to capture the dynamic nature of supply demand context within the grid. Um, so additional uh, contextual features are needed to enrich the state, sp uh, state representation. Um, but a, a tabular form of value function uh, is intractable in, in terms of uh, the number of features. Now secondly, um, our data may not be able to cover the entire state space. Um, so how uh, is the value function going to generalize to uh, states, uh, to states of the driver that have never been seen before? Uh, principle generalization is hard to do on a, on a tabular form value function. Um, and uh, since we support a large number of cities on the platform, it's also important to, to be able to uh, leverage knowledge um, during training from one city to uh, and the other cities. Um, but a tabular form value function lacks the mechanism uh, for, for transfer learning. So um, to tackle those limitations, uh, we further develop a, a deep, deep value network uh, architecture uh, to learn the value function. In addition to um, nonlinear function approximation and contextual features, um, our novel uh, deep value network has a few uh, technical highlights. Um, for state representation, um, it takes advantage of a hierarchical grid system uh, to learn an adaptive uh, quantization of the location uh, through a grids of different sizes uh, to capture unique spatial, geospatial uh, properties. Each location is then represented by the sum of uh, cerebral embeddings of different, at different scales. Um, these embeddings are memory-based neural networks and are uh, learnable high-dimensional representations. Um, for training of the value function, we have um, developed a regularization scheme um, that puts a penalty term of Lipschitz constant of the neural network to the square loss at each network update in the stochastic gradient descent. Um, the Lipschitz constant uh, is the upper bound of variation of the value function with respect to its input. 
So this makes sure that the new function um, is not too sensitive to uh, the input perturbation. And this is, uh, is important, especially uh, in the case of a nonlinear function approximation because bootstrapping is used in function updates and um, uh, training stability is sometimes the issue. Now putting the deep value network into our generalized policy iteration framework, we obtain a practical two-stage uh, iterative solution that comprises learning through uh, deep reinforcement learning and um, planning through a bipartite graph matching. The incorporation of long-term values in the assignment edge weights uh, is through the temporal difference errors um, on the driver-passenger pairs. Uh, this is the same as in the, in the TDE learning case. Um, let's visualize the uh, spatial temporal value function for a major city in China. Uh, these are the value uh, heat maps um, at a time slice uh, before the morning and evening rush hours. Um, the contrast here is actually rather clear. Um, the residential areas around uh, the city center in the morning um, have higher values indicating that drivers there have a have a higher income prospect than others uh, given uh, under the given dispatching policy. Um, in, whereas the situation is reversed in the evening uh, due to higher demand uh, in the downtown area. For transfer learning of the models among different cities, uh, we further define, refine our neural network into a dual pathway uh, architecture um, where there are two trains of network layers corresponding to uh, location features and transferable features uh, such, as, such as the uh, time, uh, spatial temporal displacement, um, as well as local uh, supply demand contextual features. Uh, the two pathways are then connected through lateral connections. Um, once the network for the, for the source city is trained, uh, the, the green blocks, which are the transferable blocks of the network, is then transplanted into the network of the target city, uh, which is then uh, further trained by the new data from, from the target city. Um, we have built a simulation environment for uh, evaluating uh, our policies and comparing benchmarks. Um, this simulator has um, a combination of deterministic and uh, dynamics and stochastic models. Um, we have benchmarked the distance-based matching, uh, tabular ten temporal difference learning, and uh, our deep value networks in our simulation environment. And it's clear that the reinforcement learning-based methods uh, all perform the baseline by five to eight percent in total driver income, and the deep value network shows the best performance. Um, we have also tested uh, transfer learning scenarios with city A as a source city and the other cities as targets. Again, we see that our proposed transfer learning architecture strikes the best um, trade-off between uh, total driver income and um, uh, pickup distance. We deployed our solution to production to carry out an A-B test in three pilot cities over a month of time last year. Um, A-B testing order dispatching algorithm uh, is actually not as straightforward as one would imagine, as in the case of uh, testing recommendation systems. Um, the main reason lies in the nature of a two-sided marketplace. Uh, the demand traffic is not separable with respect to the order dispatching policy without separating the supply. Now, without creating two production di order dispatching systems, then we have to resort to alternatives to allow two order dispatching policies run in the same city with, with minimal interference. So here we, uh, we use the time slice rotation uh, where the two order dispatch policies are executed alternatingly uh, for uh, periods of three hours within the day and the order of execution is switched from day to day for an even number of days. Um, and um, we, so, so we carry out the A-B test um, and, um, and we see that uh, the reinforcement learning based method um, also consistently outperformed um, the distance based minimization baseline uh, with a statistically significant margin 
in uh, driver income as well as in, in, in the uh, order, dis, uh, order response and fulfillment rates. Now um, let's hear what J Dr. Jie Pingye, uh, VP and uh, head of DDAI Labs has to say about the real world uh, business impact of this project. Hello everyone, I'm Jie Pingye, VP of DD Chuxing, head of DDAI Labs. Order dispatching is the process in a right sharing marketplace that has direct impact on both driver and the passenger experience. That's why here in DD, we invest significant resources in the research of other dispatching malpractices. In recent years, we have seen a steady rise in applications of reinforced learning in solving complex sequential decision problems. The groundbreaking work in this presentation is precisely a very innovative way to combine reinforced learning and operation research in a large-scale real-world system. The reinforced learning research program for order dispatching is in its third year and we have seen a profound impact that it brings to DD marketplace. We have implemented the generalized policy iteration framework in production for over 20 cities in China and gaining a consistent improvement of up to 2% in order response rate, fulfillment rate, and the total driver income. The coverage and the impact of this work continue to expand over the nation, allowing hundreds of millions of passengers to enjoy a better travel experience. We believe this is the first successful industrial application of reinforced learning based method in the right training domain. This work has fundamentally revolutionized our approach to right sharing order dispatching, dynamic resource allocation, and ad hub operation research problems in industry. Thank you. There seems to be a little bit glitch in uh, transferring, you know, the map-made video onto a Windows system, um, but uh, let's go on. Uh, so there are several directions in the research for uh, order, dis order dispatching that we are currently pursuing and in the near future. The generalized policy iteration framework that I have just described has two separate stages. Now it's natural to see if an end-to-end -end, uh, deep, uh, deep reinforcement learning method would work in this case. Um, along the way, then we have to solve uh, sample complexity and scalability issues um, and solve domain adaptation for uh, deployment. Um, we are also interested in viewing the um, right hailing marketplace as a multi-agent reinforcement learning environment to develop cooperative multi-agent strategies um, as well as uh, hierarchical reinforcement learning methods. Um, so that's it for today. I'll conclude here. Uh, thank you.